When Harry Akune and his brother Ken first volunteered for the U.S. Army's Military Intelligence Service, they paid a farewell visit to Mr. Ibarra, a respected community leader in their imprisonment camp. He congratulated us and said, you are like the cherry tree in Washington, D.C., which came from Japan. And it was nurtured and cared for and loved by America. And so therefore, you should also be like the cherry blossom and go forward and beautify America. When I was about 10 years old, my father forced me to take kendo lessons. The instructor always told us that it was uh, the way of the samurai, the way of the warrior. And he said that eventually, Japan and the United States would clash. It would be a traumatic moment for most of us because our parents were Japanese. He said that no matter what happens, you must remember that you are American citizens. Thousands of American citizens of Japanese ancestry fighting for the United States during World War II. They defended the U.S. in the Pacific, while on the west coast of America, their immigrant parents and their families were forced into imprisonment camps, out of sight, behind barbed wire and guards with guns. These were the soldiers of the Military Intelligence Service, the MIS, they showed uncommon courage at a time when their patriotism was questioned, when they were stripped of their civil rights. Japanese Americans in the Pacific War had to fight three wars. One was obviously the enemy and discrimination at home. But we in the MIS had to fight another war to prove ourselves in the battle because we're always suspect of our loyalty. 1941, a different time. In many ways, a time of innocence. Sunday picnics and drive-in movies are a way of life. The civil rights movement, the fight for gender equality, and the high-tech revolution have not yet swept society. It is a different America. Yet times are tense. Germany has overrun Europe, and U.S. involvement in the war seems imminent. Japan has ravaged much of China and threatened Southeast Asia. Here in America, Japanese immigrants were laying the foundation for their children. But for them, the land of opportunity and hope was also a land of tarnished dreams and discrimination. Ever since the late 1800s, when they first began coming to America, Many had fought racial prejudice. Many did not speak English well. They brought old ways and traditional values to their new land. Yet they were determined to westernize their American-born children. I may look Japanese. I was not uh, Japanese uh, by birth. I was an American by birth. And my uh, uh, upbringing and my thinking was uh, typical American, not typical Japanese. In this atmosphere, the Military Intelligence Service was born. The story of the U.S. Army's MIS was largely untold for many decades. Most of these soldiers were Nisei, or second-generation Japanese-American. Some of the Nisei were Kibei, that is, they were born in America and sent to Japan to be educated. These soldiers went to the Pacific during World War II to fight an enemy that shared a common ancestry, their weapon, the Japanese language. Uh, they, they often say you're fighting your fatherland, you know. I said, no, we're not fighting our fatherland. We're fighting the Japanese, uh, our enemy, you know, of the United States. Evacuation. More than 100,000 men, women, and children, all of Japanese ancestry, removed from their homes in the Pacific Coast states, 
to wartime communities established in out-of-the-way places. Their evacuation did not imply individual disloyalty, but was ordered to reduce a military hazard at a time when danger of invasion was great. They are not prisoners, they are not internees. They are merely dislocated people, the unwounded casualties of war. <laughs>